Welcome to the meet for the start line. Clear up. Welcome back to Adelaide. Thank you. You enjoyed it? Uh, it's much more expensive than I remembered. Uh, I saw on Facebook. <laughs> you used the jumbo size cups on here. Yeah, it's a uh, free refill with jumbo size cups in here. It was like half the size, double the price. What are you going to do? Get back on a plane. Get back to Silicon Valley. Send yeah. us some cups. Because <laughs> if we go to Marion, Marion Shopping Centre has some jacks. You can just quickly walk through the side. Yeah. And with those big jumbo cups, I'll just refill it myself. No worries. Right, cool. <laughs> uh, so how's it feel driving on the other side of the road? Um, Have you driven yet? Once, once and I crashed. crashed nearly. So I turned into the corner and there was no one on the street. <laughs> left to right, left to right. <laughs> and I was like, left this right. I did that when I went to LA two years ago. Yeah. It was like there was no cops around. <laughs> so how we usually start starting right yeah. is we really want to identify who you are, how you grow up. Okay. So what did your parents do when you were growing up? Um, my parents, so they were, um, my dad's a printer, not an Epson printer, he's a, uh, he's oh, a right. machine, okay. so yeah, he's a print printer, color? four colours, five colours, yeah. uh, my mum, she just worked, um, just ran, ran her jobs, yep. uh, sales, um, she does yeah, random stuff. Okay, so what was your first, um, entrepreneurial, like, what, what was your first type of business that, you did. Um, legal, illegal, it doesn't matter. Legal, illegal. Really, really um, so I think I remember one of my first kind of legal businesses. On camera, I want to say like illegal businesses. Like that. Turn, turn the camera off for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one I did was um, I was working as a web designer, right? And then I, like, it was interesting. I went for a trip in Thailand, and if you go to Thailand, you know that jewelry is really cheap. Right? Jewelry, like sterling silver, is like one cent or whatever it is, it's like ridiculous. So um, basically just bought and imported um, jewellery, selling silver jewellery from like initially from Thailand and China, um, brought it back here, rebranded it, put like a nice label on it, sold it for like seventy nine dollars an earring. So kind of like how you go and take the cops. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was great because we, we so we started to sell that and then um, uh, we went to different um, Distributors around the state, so we had like one inch, like a fashion agent they call it. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was my um, ex girlfriend at the time, and uh, she was be should be really great at selling this stuff. And I'm really bad because I'm very honest. So the girl goes, "Oh, what do you think of these earrings?" I'm like, "Yeah, not too good." <laughs> and never sell a thing. So uh, yeah, that was our first time. So how, how long did you do that for? We did it for about a year and a half, off and on. Um, yeah, you, you, you know, had like heaps of. So the, one of the problems we, we found in that business was with fashion. Everyone is it's very subjective, right? Like what, what you like is what I like. Yeah, it's like your pink G string, you like that, I don't like that. Who told you? I've seen the Facebook. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so, yeah. so the, the problem is like, then, then every, um, then you have to hold a lot of stock in yeah. the inventory, then you have to order more, and then you have more orders, then you have to like, diversify, like more designs, you have to keep up with the fashion. So it was like a real terrible business. But was it a good lesson? Yeah, it was. Did it help you in way you are today? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like it, it helped me understand what I didn't like to do in terms of business. Like if I had no passion in fashion, jewelry, and ladies' handbags, then don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, after that, you said you were a web designer. Yeah. You started. You actually started up your agency in Adelaide. Yeah, so previous to that, I actually was a web designer. Well, I, I studied graphic design at university. Uh, so my, uh, uh, but, but I've always loved web and all the visual stuff. So I remember my last uh, last couple of years in uni, you know, everyone's doing, if you're, who's a designer, any designers here? So if you're a designer, you know that you know, when you do the uni, you have to do packaging and branding and all these really boring, crappy things. Right? So I was like, I hate this, I want to do digital stuff because that's where the world's going. This yeah. is 2000, two, yeah, 2000. Um, so I'm like 18. So, and, um, and so I basically told my lecturer, hey, can I create my own course curriculum for the final year of the last two years of my university career? And she, she's like, yeah, sure. So I just did digital stuff. Um, so after I had a job um, at a few 
agencies. Um, so you work some of the more famous places around that lake for web studios. Yeah. yeah. Which companies were those? Please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the company I'll, called, I'll be kind. Yeah, um, there's a company called uh, Confusion. 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 Yeah. Confusion. Yeah. 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 Um, so I worked there and I worked at uh, Voice Design for a little bit. So if you know Voice, they do amazing design stuff. Uh, but they're very traditional graphic designers. And then uh, Rap Bag Games is... So what did you do for Rap Bag? Because we've got another guy here who uh, we interviewed last year. He yeah. worked for Rap Bag as well. Uh, was it Philip Mays? <laughs> yeah, that's his name. <laughs> um, funny enough, so, so Philip and I, that's how we met. We met at Rap Bag, right? So um, I was in the US working in Midway Games because we were quiet. And then I'd come back after this two week later ago work. <laughs> and then Philip would, was, was sitting in my seat. I was like, who the hell is this guy? Get out of my seat. And he's like, oh, I'm the new programmer. I'm like, oh, bloody hell. And you know, he like, talks really quickly. I'm like, who is this guy? So um, that's how I met Philip. Um, but what I was doing, I was the, um, uh, the lead UI designer, interface designer. Yeah, yeah. so you went from web and you started doing more stuff with actual game. Game, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we've heard that story about the gaming industry. I think you already talked about that one pretty bad. And then you guys separated for a little bit? Yeah, we, we it, it wasn't him, it was me. Yeah. Um, so we, <laughs> we uh, separated for a little bit. We, um, well, well no, he, he stayed in the gaming industry. Um, and I, at that stage, I was like, I just want to do something else. And I started working. Uh, and actually, then I worked for another web design company, Catalyst Web Design. That's the one I was thinking about. Yes. Yeah, so, last, there's one other game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so went for Catalyst, um, and I was the like an account manager there, yep. um, producer, and I, I was also the CMS. So you were the CMS? <laughs> I manually do all the edits. Okay. Right, yeah. So I, I was basically doing everything um, yeah, manually. So um, it was good. I really enjoyed it. Like uh, worked there for I think, a year or two, mm -hmm. um, and meanwhile I did a lot of like little side things, side projects um, that ultimately failed. Let's talk about some of the failures. Oh jeez. Um, What's your worst one? My worst one. Uh, there's so many. I mean, oh, there has to be one that just stinks. <laughs> I want the one that stinks. Well, so one that I, well, I kind of, so everything that I did, I think I, there was always something good that came out. And so one of the ones I can think of is, uh, I don't know if you know Prickly Heat Powder. <laughs> it was looking at me like, what? Uh, so it's, it's like this talcum powder that's used in Thailand. And it's like, um, when you put it on, it's like very minty, so it's like meth methyl sort of infused, so it's really cool. Okay. So, um, you know, tried to import that, right? and I thought it was great, and like we, we got like a whole big carton as a sample, and we were like going to go to different pharmacies and distribute and stuff. Um, and like, we spent like six months chasing these pharmacies and nothing really happened, and I thought that was really sad, because I thought it was such a great product. Um, but I got to keep a, You've got a whole lot of power, power of this, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. When did that one out? Can you still got some? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> this was like 10 years ago. <laughs> so the problem was, you, did you sort of learn to fail fast? Um, not really. Well, we well, didn't understand well, what that meant yet. I have no idea. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I just, it just didn't work and I got like a free palette, so I was happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then um, you've gone from back to Mighty Kingdom. Yeah, so after Catalyst, um, you know, I thought, well, I, I want to do things a little bit differently. I want to try to do my own thing. So I started my own um, digital marketing agency. Um, yeah, so basically started doing that. Um, it was what, was, what was the name of that? that one? <laughs> it's called uh, Jindo. <laughs> uh, we had a trading name, Sovereign Digital. Yeah, that's the one. Trading name. So we um, had that. Um, it was great. It was. You know, I got to work on a lot of really cool projects. Um, uh, we, we, yeah, it's great. Yeah. So you started to expand that. Do you have a lot of overseas development done for yeah. that business? Yeah, so um, this was in 2006, 2007, I think, probably a bit earlier. Um, what, what happened was we, we had a, um, a hired guy locally to work on, on a pro program here. And we had a project due 5 o'clock uh, Friday, right? Um, so yes, what day? Friday, what day? Uh, Friday. 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 Oh, so same day. Same day, same day. So he was working, he was like, look, you need to get this out by Friday, but in the next four hours, 
four o'clock he got up, he's like, oh, I'm gonna go. I'm like, where are you going? He's like, oh, it's beer o'clock. <laughs> like, this is terrible. That's me. <laughs> and so I was like, this is this this one worked. So we hired a um, found a guy at Odes at that stage. It was like, yeah, I got him to start working. He was in Vietnam. Then we started to find more work. Um, uh, guy in India, and then they would turn over stuff like in a few hours, right? Like, and they would work the asses off all night. They didn't have beer o'clock. They had no, they had, no, I don't think it's, I think it's, uh, not their religion, <laughs> but um, they're tea o'clock. Now, they, um, they, they did work really quickly, they worked really hard, and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, then I had probably had about five or six different people across the, the world, like from Russia, I'm um, in the US. Um, Still doing work for me, and then I thought, well, this is pretty tricky because I'm up 24 hours a day uh, trying to coordinate everything. So one of the guys, the, uh, the Pakistan guy, he was like, hey, uh, I want to, um, you know, can I, can I, can I work? Step up. Yeah, he, he stepped up, and I was like, cool, that's that's great. Um, what do you want to do with life? He's like, I want to create my own business. Yeah. So I said, well, we need more, we need help. Yeah. Right. So basically, just copy with the other um, contractors, focused on him, and he. It was like our sister company, so he grew that. To, we, we had about 20, 20 to twenty-five still workers that was working for us at one stage, like full time, um, and that was like the best time ever. So you kind of got that into management. Yeah. So he yeah. became like the manager. So I guess I know there's at least one or two people in the crowd that have been thinking about for their start at the moment, maybe outsourcing. Yeah. So do you have any tips for them if they are going to outsource their work? What would be the top three things that they should or shouldn't do? Top three things. Well. Um, so first of all, like, uh, product engineering is really hard if you want to outsource it. Um, you, well, if, if you're outsourcing and you're small, you, you just you want to get things done as quickly as possible and like get the most minimum, I guess, product out you can. Um, the tips that work well for us. So uh, if you have a project, you don't want to go here. Yeah, here's my project. Go, go build it and then like, leave them for six months. You want to sort of test them out. Um, you know, give them like a very small. Thing to do like um, I'll fix this on my WordPress website for example and then sort of see how responsive they are. If they're responsive then you, you know, increase the state so you say well now can you build me like a five page website and then go and do that. And so it takes a bit of time to really get to know them. Um, yeah. And then once you know once you have that trust um, you want to make sure that they're punctual on time you can communicate with them. Um, you know, there's a lot of like uh, cultural barriers you know in some countries you go can you do this and they always say yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, can you really do it? Yeah, yeah. And then they can't do it. You're like, damn. Then like, you say something. Yeah. So you just have to like let action sort of speak louder than head nods. Yeah. Those yeah. yeah. head nods tend to be really loud. I know. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> so that's when I saw something. You had that company. You've also been. You're doing money in the control. Money. So we, um, so Sovereign Digital, we, we sort of like built a lot of websites and we're happy, like it was the best time like, I was making a ton of money um, and outsourcing for not much. I was working maybe 30 hours a week, probably even less. Um, so that was really fun. <laughs> um, and then I guess what I sort of found was like websites were becoming more of a commodity so everyone could get stuff outsourced, right? Yeah. And then especially in Adelaide, like, hardest market to make money because everyone's like, oh, you know, like, I know um, Jack down the street who can do it for yeah, 200 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, I know you, oh, I can make uh, Sam do it, he'll give me money to do it for me. And you're like, this is really tough. So what we, um, uh, so I sort of started to wind that business down. I um, actually sold it to, uh, we, we had a manager or a designer that was working for me and sort of sold it to him. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of with Phil, we're working on a few projects on the side, um, predominantly around mobile. And I was like, mobile is so much fun, right? Because you're, it's like working in console games, um, but you're working on one device. That looks all right, yeah. And it kind of works, it's yeah. like just one device, it's easy. Like, and, and then so we started to just build stuff on the side. Um, and then one day I was like, hey, you need a designer and I need a programmer. Why don't we just start a company together? And that's how we got money going. Maybe we came back together. Yeah. Got married for a while. Got married for a while. Yeah. 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 So there's um, this thing with Happy Inspector, it's called the Jigger approach. A lot of people, so when someone has a startup in Adelaide, sort of going, well, where are you in your business? And they're like, oh, I've got this idea, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, we're well, doing the Jigger approach. What's that? Have you heard of that? <laughs> no. So, Happy Inspector, yeah. you prototype a whole bunch of designs in it, yeah. and put them on the iPad yeah. as photos, and just pretend that you were. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So tell me more about that because that's called the jiggle approach. Oh, if you haven't heard of it before, you yeah. ask me more about it. Okay. So I trademark that. Just yeah, a okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, um, it's quite new. <laughs> so the so maybe I explain how we got to doing happy sector. It's probably easier to more perspective. So we um so one thing that I really like doing was like investing in real estate. So that's my sort of other passion in life. Um, and that's when Phil and I sort of like broke up because he didn't want to go down and out investing in real estate. Screw you, Phil. Um, so we, we actually, um, uh, so one thing I found was like my property managers, if you were managing my property, if you guys are renters or own property, you know that property managers give you like an inspection report, right? And predominantly it's always pen, it's well tradition, it's pen and paper based, it's handwritten. And I was like, this really, really sucks. Like, I couldn't even read it, right? So we, I have like some property in Australia, US, um, in the UK as well. Yeah. And everywhere around the world is the same. It's pen and paper. Uh, 2011, one of my property managers, they would take a photo and um, scan it and then fax it to me. And I'm like, 2011, I called email. Yeah, I don't have a fax machine, so I decided to e fax. <laughs> and then now I have to pay off a monthly subscription to something I don't even need. Yeah. And it's like the worst thing ever. So I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's a better way. So um, uh, I, I guess I just designed, being a designer, I just like put some screenshots really nicely laid out. Uh, Rang 20 different companies like LJ Hooker, Ray White, anyone I could find, and said, um, Hey, this is uh, Jindo. Um, I mean, a nameless company, so I have no company at that stage. Um, just building a, an app for inspections, can I come and see you? Right? And maybe like five out of like seven of them, like, Yeah, yeah, sure, come down and come down and say hi. Uh, so we go out and I'll bring this iPad. It's just like, these are just screenshots. Don't, they don't do anything, right? So I'll go in and say, Oh, so you tap the button, swipe. <laughs> And then I'm like, whoa, how'd you do that? Let me press it back. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's what I'll do. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. Um, and they're like, how much is it? And I'll be like, holy shit, I haven't even thought about the price. Uh, I don't know, like, how much would you pay for it? Like, what does it solve? What paint does it solve? And then they used to, they'll tell me, oh, it, it, you know, oh my God, if I had this, it would solve, like, um, it would save me so much time. Oh, cool. And what else does it do? Oh my God, my, I have a headache with all these people. I can't find stuff. I'm like, oh, what else does it do? Oh, you know, like, um, we, we need to integrate with this system, you know, it's called REST or whatever it is, and, and I'm like, oh, what else? And they'll tell me all their pain points, and I said, then how does this solve it? They'll tell me, and I'm like, oh, cool, cool, that's good. And then they'll ask, well, well how much is it? How, you know, how, um, so I said, well, if we charged you, you know, a dollar inspection, would that be okay? And they're like, yeah, yeah, dollar sounds fine. So I'm like, cool, we charge you $2. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, this is good. Um, and then uh, they would ask, hey, when can I sign up to it? Um, so we, we, we just said, oh, okay, well, um, you know, if you, if you commit to signing up now, we can give you a bit of a price break, but we actually price break. So American. Then. We give you a discount um, uh, if you sign up now. Uh, and, then, and then, so we just like sign up, we had probably about 20 customers that sort of either paying us or in, in intent to sign up. Yeah. Um, so I went back to the office and I said to Phil and, and Andrew, my co-founder, happy to say, and I said, hey, we should do this. Uh, and that's all we did. So how much time did you put in for the designs and these two? No idea, probably just like uh, a day, less than, less than a day, like half a day or something like that. Yeah. How much did you pivot on those? Because I think I've heard some stories where you go out and like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I had this? So that your next meeting, you go back to the office, put that feature in for your next meeting, yeah. so that that next person would go, oh, this is cool, it has that. Yeah, so it's, I think startups is like just a big learning process, right? Like you, you just sit down and listen to people, you ask a lot of questions and you shut up. I think thing to do. Yeah. Um, so you, I'll go out and now the next time I meet someone I'm like, hey, how are you going? Good. I want to show you this product, this inspection product. Yeah, come and see. It's like, go in. I'm like, um, so um, how do you kind of do your inspections? Oh, I use pen and paper. Oh my God, that's such a pain, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's such a pain. And now I'm like, yeah, and like how long do you spend on it? You probably spend like a couple of hours on it? Yeah, we do. Wow, that's terrible. You know, you just take things that they already know. And they're like, oh, this is so cool. And you show, hey, have you thought about this feature that can, you know, you can take multiple photos? And they're like, wow, this is amazing. And then, yeah, and that's what we did. So we just like kept iterating, like changing up the, the value composition was. Um, and then the next question is, does it integrate with my existing software? And we soon worked out, like, does it need to integrate? No, not really. So then we, we start to learn what this say. What, what you could put in, like what would be valuable, what's just yeah. the Yeah, and sort of the objections, right? So people always, like, people are always wanting to say no, uh, yeah. wanting to find a reason to say no, so you sort of just find out, um, like, you know, what, what are the, the common objections and what sort of, like, and sort of um, digging deeper into the objections. So like, oh, it needs to integrate. Why does it need to integrate? Because, um, 
because I can import my properties. If you imported your properties, does it need to integrate? No, not really. Well, it doesn't need to integrate. Yeah. So just think about it. Okay. okay. Um, so from, do you think, because you, you have that web business beforehand, so you've, you've done all this stuff where you've sat down with the client yeah. and they've told you what they want, mm -hmm. and you've started to build you know, their websites. Do you think that really helps you with the yeah, absolutely. business part? Yeah, I think it definitely helps a lot. Um, you know, like, I think one thing that Adelaide has going for us is there's a lot of uh, freelancers or contractors or people that have worked in that kind of position. Yeah. And if, if you're half decent at what you do, like, you're, then you become very good at listening and building what people, kind of, like, you're good at taking inputs from people and then, like, putting your spit on top and of it. And then filtering out the stuff. Exactly, yeah. And that, that really helped us a lot. And it still helps us today. Um, we were, we're not perfect at it. Um, I probably feel, you know, feels probably much better than me. Uh, but, yeah, we, we, we do that. Now, today. So, how come Phil's not involved anymore? He is. He is? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, he, well, I mean, we. I think he, he had a family, so he had to stay here. Yeah, he had a baby, right? Yeah. So, he, he could come over. But, like, I speak to him probably more than his wife does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just showing the camera. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah like, we, we, I speak to him probably every second, third day. And, and it, more than anything, just, like, just emotional support. Yeah, <laughs> just, just you sounding more. Yeah, sounding more like you virtual hugs. Yeah. Well, more than virtual ones. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we have to put like I T on this thing. <laughs> Big black bar or something now. <laughs> so you started having space in Adelaide. I remember the office, I wasn't there. It was um what was it before? What was your office before you It was a Mexican burrito burger joint. It's always still small like that. Yeah, it's still does. But it was a tiny place and it was good for where where you guys started. Yeah. Um you started to book it was next to the adult shop as well. Yeah, that's right. right. So that's between the, I always tell people it's between the adult shop and the flight flight agent. And no one goes to play the music as well. Yeah, he plays music at four pm by himself, locks himself, no no customers going. It's like the weirdest, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the creepiest. Uh, you know, obviously you've got it. And then you had that bag address, so you run away from it. <laughs> uh, so you started building the product here. Yeah. Uh, did you ask us much of having spoken to the stuff? We used to have Andrew. We had Andrew, so uh, the way Andrew came forward, he was working for us at Mighty Kingdoms at the time, and I said, hey Andrew, can you build this um, app? I've got an idea for it, I want to build it. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. So how much do you want to charge me? And he's like, oh, I don't know, I'll charge you like 10 bucks an hour. <laughs> I was like, score. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really, 10 bucks, that's a lot. He goes, oh, nine ma, 10, 10 bucks a lot. <laughs> so uh, we, we were pretty lucky that way, like, you know, he, we were very lucky. Where, where did you find him? I'm not sure if we count that in. Feels, feels in the field now. Uh, we found him in Foodland. Who found him? Phil found him. It was back in the bags. Well, no, 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 it wasn't literally, hey, you went Foodland, tell me. Um, it was a family friend that used to work with us at that bag. Yeah. And said, hey, we've got this young kid who's, who's building iOS apps, um, looking for a job, he doesn't know what he wants to do in life. <laughs> he does, maybe. But, uh, he, he, he wasn't quite sure yet. Yeah, he wasn't quite sure. He was like, doing a science degree or something like that, and he wasn't really excited about it. And, we just said, hey, why don't you come and build some apps with us? We've got no money. Come work for us. And so that's how it started. That's, that's sort of what you do now with Starbucks as well, really. <laughs> Still the same thing. Young kids love that. Yeah, yeah. That's why you get a lot of stuff these days in Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, still the same thing. Hey, what are you doing? Not much. Come work for us. Come work for us. We can find money out. We'll have coffee. We've got exactly. Beer <laughs> um, so, you, did you try to raise money in that way? Yeah, so we came out of um, initial days, like, so, yeah, we did. We tried to raise from. Uh, we went through Innovate SA at that stage. Um, Innovate SA was you know, probably one of the best things that we kind of did at that stage. We had no idea about raising money. That's where you got the pinup boy from. I don't know about that. Yeah, there's a friend of you smiling boy on the iPad doing that smiling face. Oh, that's terrible. Um, it was in the newspaper, so we all you the pinup boy about that. Now I see where that comes from. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we tried to raise in Adelaide. Um, this is like before, very, very early on. Um, so a lot of the things like you see us doing now, like we, we spent a lot of time before prepping it, like making sure it worked before you did anything. Um, and we tried to raise it, but we weren't very successful. Did you get anyone? Um, when I say not very successful, I mean we got no one. Um, <laughs> uh, we thought we got maybe someone, but no, not around. Not at that stage. Okay. Um, but since then, we've got some really good. Uh, the other guys. Too. Um, yeah. That, so, so when we first started, we had no, no one that wanted to do this. Like we had a. Shitty valuation, one hundred thousand dollars for three hundred thousand dollars, three thousand three hundred thousand dollar valuation. So a third of the company, 
and everyone's like, no, this is shit. Uh, we like you, you're a good guy, but we don't think that this is a big industry. Yeah. Okay. So what happened when you kept getting those notes? What, what sort of went through your mind? Did you ever get to that point where like, this just isn't going to work? Let's go back to making websites and apps for other people. Not, not really, because I, I, I think I had enough, had had enough of making web websites and apps for other people. Like, like those, those businesses are great, but you could spend a, like you could spend 10, 20 years just doing that, and it's a ne it's never ending. You're always working. You're always working. You're building something else for someone else, and you always like most cases you're building something for someone that doesn't even know what they want, but they tell you what to do. It. It's like oh, yeah, like even like really, once you launch those products, you get to point like, that's really my baby. Like I have built all those things in the client. They had the idea, but they didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it was just like I had enough of it. I wanted to build. Uh, you know, product or build something else. And so, um, when when I had, when people said no, what did I do? I think I just um, I don't know, I just kept doing it. Like you just, just kept going. Yeah, because I knew that the market was big. Like it, I didn't know how big it was at that stage. I just thought it was, you know, I can get you know, I can make like hundred thousand dollars. I'm happy. But it's much bigger than that. So um, we just kept going, and then um, we got into we applied um, Start for StartMate at that stage. Um, again, at that stage, again, I had no idea about raising money. Um, like what sort of value was, right? I just thought, oh, cool. Um, Starlink sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, went to actually went to San Francisco just after uh, during that time. I sort of found out more about this you know, before you applied. Um, just after I applied, yeah, yeah. And then um, yeah, we applied to it. I actually met Nikki Shabak the year before that at a random event. I don't remember where I met him, but um, so I kind of knew what he was doing, but I didn't know who he was. Yeah. And then, uh, um, applied for Starlink, and we got him. And so what was the what was the process like? What was it? What was it like being in that three month program? Because those guys are the sort of rock stars for for Australia. We've got like Alan Jones, yeah, Mitch, that Alan Jones, rock star. He's pretty tall. Yeah, he is. <laughs> um, I saw his profile picture on LinkedIn. I'm like, yeah, he doesn't look that tall. And then the, when we had the majority, when we had the first majority, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like far out of that tall. Yeah, he, he's um. He's a very tall man. It's um, it, it's great. Like, like Startmate is, as you guys remember, it's like the, the premier incubator in Australia. Like, if you wanted to go to one and you want to succeed, like that's the best one to go to. Um, the process we, so I think it's, I think they're still working. Like, they're getting better at finding the right companies. Uh, but when we applied, uh, <laughs> 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 because it, it, we, so what happened was. Um, uh, like there's like a due date at five by seven time, mm -hmm. and it's like a video interview. So you have yeah, we're gonna do it. Yeah, and that process it's is like a three minute video or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you guys heard of it? Yeah. yeah. Did you know what? We, so we we actually like did it last minute. Did you hear about that? No. I guess so. It was supposed to be like deadline was twelve at a.m. at night, and we decided, hey, should we do it? Like, yeah, let's do it. So we started like writing the script, the pitch at ten p.m. at night. And this, I was working in uh, my uh, brother-in-law's garage, so you know, Tom's house in his, uh, basically in his garage. I made, made the wall really professional, like <laughs> I was in some studio or something. And then I started to record it, and I was like, oh my god, it's like 11.30 and I haven't got the right pitch yet. Um, and then, so what they say is when you apply, you need to have like a URL of like a YouTube video. Yeah. And if you, if you miss the deadline, you're in trouble. So I'm like, oh, damn it, what do I do? So what I did was I, I, I basically sent, put a URL on it. Um, Happyinspector.com um, slash whatever it's like start mate. And, I, and I just embedded a YouTube link on there. Yeah. So it gave me enough like six hours to do that <laughs> YouTube video. So I slept at like 3 a.m. Um, but we it, it was just back and forth. Do you think this is good? He's like, yeah, that kind of works. Try it again. And we're just pitching and pitching. And then eventually got like a two-minute video which we launched and worked pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. But something that I don't think a lot of people know about the start mate process. Um, we I don't think we got in just on the merits of the video. Um, like before, like a month or two before that, I, I met like Cardia Houseman from Business Catalyst. Um, like when I went to, I met Sam Frame. You know, so I met him, I knew him, I met uh, Nikki. Because, because the mentors have a big part in that process. They, 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 they select basically. Yeah. Every mentor has like a, uh, a point rating system. Yeah. So I actually met a few of them beforehand, like not because of starting, just random things. Yeah, just walking around. Walking around, just showing like, uh, you know, one thing I hate in the startup world is people go, oh, I've got this idea. Right. Oh, cool, what's your idea? Oh, I can't tell you, it's a secret. <laughs> and it's like, why? Oh, someone's going to copy it. It's like, bullshit, no one's got time to copy your own. Yeah. And no one's going to execute it the way you do it. Yeah. Right. So, one thing I did, I didn't know it was the right thing to do. I, I had my iPad everywhere I went, and I just, just showed you, what do you think of this idea? And they're like, oh, this is great, why don't you do this? And you know, like, the more people you talk to, the more, the more feedback, feedback you get. Um, 
And you know, like we've got a lot of competitors in our space. You probably know this. The guy in Adelaide that does exactly what we do, yeah. right? And and he sells to the real estate institute. And it's like, who cares? Like, it's a bigger market out there. Well, I think that this fact is that statistics are one says if you have an idea, there's like four other people around the world working on your idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I don't know if it's yeah. like real, if it's real stat or it's just like a wife's tale. Well, I think like 87 percent of stats are real. No, but 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 it's true. It's like, uh, and, and so I think that really helped us because we, we went around showing our, our product. So half of the mentors at Startman already kind of got well, like four or five of them, which was probably a quarter. Already knew we just kind of were around doing this product, and like we we're just hustling and just talking to people. And yeah. I think that really helped us. Yeah. Uh, so you spent what was? Did, did you all want to go to Valley as well? Your, like your, um, what do you call it, intake, the day? Oh, yeah, yeah, so for... I can't remember if it was the second one or if it was the first yeah, one. So, um, yeah, so we, we went to Silicon Valley to pitch, so um, what happened was, actually, before we even got the start, mate, I told Phil that in, in, in March, regardless of what happened, I'm going to move this to Silicon Valley as well. I'm going to try this thing over in the US, it's a bigger market. And then um, we got the start, man, and you know, Nikki was like, oh, yeah, so in April, you're going to go to Silicon Valley and pitch. I'm like, oh, cool, this works out well. <laughs> so that's how we, we got in there. Um, we went, we pitched at, uh, like, so with start, man, you pitch in Melbourne, a demo day, then you do one in Sydney, yeah. then you do one in Silicon Valley, and then you do one in New York. Yeah. Did they do New York this year? I don't think they did New York. New York was, wasn't that great for start, man. They were not ready for it yet. Well, it's a very different crowd, right? So, yeah. uh, so uh, did you raise you raised through that once you went through the valley? Uh, at that stage, what well, we pitched a bit, and you know, some again, some investors was like, "Oh yeah, maybe." I don't know. Your valuation is really high, and I said, "Look, you know, we're definitely going to hit that valuation. We're going to to, to to the valley." And they're like, "No, you won't." I'm like, "No worries. I'll see you soon." And then so we left. We pitched in um, Silicon Valley and got some a, a few commitments at that stage, yeah. um, and we basically smashed what we thought we in terms of. Uh, the valuation, yeah. Uh, so then we went back and told them, like, hey, look, <laughs> you, know, you should have invested like a month ago. Yeah. And then that's, that's yeah. So did they, they invest? Um, just a few of them did. Uh, well, one of them did in Sydney. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when you did start, man, um, I think you didn't have a house there, did you? Uh, where did you eat it in Sydney when you were in the start? Yeah. No, well, I did a little startup style. Yes, yeah, well, I did wife and time to it. Yes, my wife, uh, well, she was my fiance at the time, yeah. so she came and we stayed at her sister's uh, house. House is probably not the wrong word, apartment, yeah. unit, maybe. Yeah, so it's a one bedroom. Yeah, one bed. And so we're living in the, the, the floor in the corner on a mattress for like three to six months, like six months. Yeah. No, four it's months, four months, yeah, four months. Four months, yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty terrible. When, how did you find that with your marriage? Did that with your girlfriend? Like what, what sort of problem did you get into? Um, what, what advice could you give any other entrepreneur that has a partner? Yeah, find the, find, the, find the right partner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do that, but uh, I, I was really lucky because she's a really forgiving person. Like she's really supportive. Right, so she just... She got what you were trying to get to. Um, well, she knew how much it meant to me, I guess, or how much I really wanted to do this. and like. Yeah, so I think she just said, yeah, go for it. Um, she likes Sydney as well. Yeah, <laughs> so so it kind of worked. Yeah, um, but it, it's really hard. I think it's one of the hardest things in startup life is the, the balance, the, 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 the relation then you will start. Yeah, because and, and I don't know when you have kids. I think that's even, I don't have kids yet, but I can't imagine having that. Day. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. So you can probably... Um, I, I used to go to sleep at 5 o'clock in the morning, and then my kids, my son would wake up at 6, yeah. and my ex-wife, um, like, no, you want to stay up all night, you can get up when the kids get up. <laughs> so I used to learn how to do five minute naps. Wow. I'd lay on the lounge and have a five minute nap. I'd put something on TV and breakfast, and I'd set an alarm for every five minutes. Yeah. Just to make sure they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think there's any, like, I, I don't know, like, it's something that, um, as part of my journey, like, I'm trying to find out, like, how do you maintain that balance? Yeah. You know, so if anyone out there knows, I'd be happy to share it with you. Uh, so you've gone to the valley. How long have you been there now? To uh, over two years now. Two years, yeah. How do you find the difference between being in Adelaide versus the valley? Um, like just living, just living. Um, it's it's much busier in the valley, right? Like, so I live in San Francisco, 
Um, and it's like, there's no car park, so you, I have to park my car like five minute walk away from my house. So I can't do grocery shopping, it's really annoying. Um, and they're so easy, you just like park it, you know, people hear, oh, there's a traffic jam, it takes me 10 minutes <laughs> in the city. I'm like, dude. <laughs> Things have changed in the last year, traffic's okay. crazy. <laughs> All right, sorry. Um, but I don't know, it's just, um, Adelaide's really easy compared to San Francisco, like lifestyle-wise. Um, San Francisco is really exciting from like just the, the vibes just different. Like for the tech. Yeah, for tech, for tech especially. Right? Yeah. Um, you, you just you meet people that you hear of on TV or you read about, and they're just like down the street. And, you know, you get to yeah, they're like you meet crazy, like it's just some big star in the startup scene. You yeah. buy a coffee and you just go for it. Yeah, and half the deals are done over like coffee and some coffee. Pretty much. Yeah, so like you just have access to more people, more capital. Um, more, more talent, you know, I don't, well, I don't, talent's kind of a questionable one because it's not necessarily yeah, how, how many have you imported from here? Imported. You've stolen a whole bunch of smuggled, people. Uh, smuggled around, oh, we have probably about six or seven guys at uh, Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah. How many you team now? Uh, we have about 12 of us yeah. and a few of them. That's a few with both local guys as well. What are they doing here? They're sales? No, they're like, yeah. 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 Um, so in terms of yeah. If if you could have, would you stay in Adelaide? If I could have, yeah. So if if you could have gotten the money that you needed at the start, would you have preferred to stay in Adelaide to do your start? Uh, no. Or what? What would it have taken Adelaide to have to give you? And what what could Adelaide give you to catch you here? So if oh, that's a oh, your questions are really hard. <laughs> um, I'll be easy. Well, I, I think. No idea. Probably not. No, no. <laughs> no there is something. Um, so, so that's that's yeah. what we really want to do, and that's what we're trying to do with that right now. Is that you know, if we get more feedback of why people are leaving and what would it have taken for them to stay, then that helps the next generation. Yeah. So it's a lot of things, right? So you have like capital, just one aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's like the the, the customers, right? Like the, the market in the US is so much massive. It's big, like, so if you look at like LJ Hooker, Ray White, and maybe Section 21, like three of those combined in terms of the number of properties they manage, right? Mm -hmm. one, one customer in the US basically is, has more properties than all three of them combined, which is ridiculous, yeah. right? And then so, and, and there's not just one company that has more, there's it's like, like a bunch. There's a bunch, there's like a, a couple thousand of them that do that. You know, and it's like, wow, that's a huge market. And people here, we just can't, happen. wow, that's a big market. And, and so customers is one thing, the market size, um, access. Are you can get sales guys over there and sell for you guys? You, I, I guess we could, but half the time we still don't know what we're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so you're like, your day to day, you have inspected, you're getting on off and down and buddy, some have coffee, and asking them to No, it's still not, doing um, business. Yeah, so every day, like, I just work. I don't do anything exciting. What do you do for your day? So I usually wake up at about nine. And you're thinking, oh, I think I sleep pretty easy. That's, that's when I wake up. <laughs> um, and then I spend like an hour or so just like planning the day, answering emails, getting things that I've done for the day, written down and started. And then going to the office at about 10, um, and then work with everyone in the team. So hey, how's, you know, how's the sales guys going? What do you guys focus on today? Go to the marketing guys, what are you doing? How are you gonna get more leads? What's been happening? Product with the product guys, um, why is it not working? You know, get angry and stuff, and then um, <laughs> get angry for a long time, and then have lunch, <laughs> and then um, uh, later part of the day, sort of meeting sort of the customers. So if some, I don't do a lot of sales these days, um, but if there's a larger customer, then I sort of usually make that presence. Make the presence and you know, yes, <laughs> you type, type, type yeah, into my other work. Um, so that just like helping sort of the high level stuff, and then. That's about seven, eight o'clock at that stage, and then I go back to helping the, the product team you know, you know, because they stay late. They stay until seven, eight o'clock at night. Right, so I finish that, and I go home and have dinner with my wife, and um, have a bit of a break, and then it's probably eleven o'clock. Then I'm on like, back to work again. So I work till about three o'clock in the morning. That's why you guys always see me on Facebook. Always, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm back to see you start messaging. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, then, then sleep at three maybe, and then I get back at nine and do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's my day. Uh, so you have to be there for those big deals. That makes sense. Yeah. What was what was the other one thing that they could have done? That might have um, so access to mentors and, and people that have done it before. 
Because um, a lot of, I mean, and that could, could you could still do that by you agree uh, in a buzzword, in a buzzword sort of that. No, it wasn't around that stage, yeah. Um, and like, mentors are people that, you know, people have done it before. Um, basically just to help you out. Like, I, I, the, the, the tricky thing is people always go, oh, I want to have a mentor that tells me exactly what to do. And, yeah, and, and it's not how it works, and no mentor can do that because they've worked with different businesses. Unless they've done exactly the same thing, they can't help you. So um, the mentors I have, like, like Bill Barty, uh, advisors, so, you know, he's something across ventures. So he helps me a lot with the emotional side of running the business. So like, like Bill, what do I do? I'm really so stressed he, out. He tells you how long to be angry with the business for. Yeah, well, he's just like, hey, do you know, you know, you don't have to like worry about things. Things just worry about themselves. <laughs> wow, that's so profound. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then he just like you know, tells you like, well, you know, so you, it's just, just a sounding board. So yeah. you, you tell him what's happening. He asks you those questions that you just asked him, and then you answer them. So it's like a sit there cheap psychologist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Really stuff. So access to that, and just uh, I think that's really important. There's not many people. In, I, well, I couldn't find a lot of people in Adelaide back then. Back then. I mean, now there's like people are stepping up, which is great for the community. Um, but I think there's still that big disconnect, right, from people that uh, start up to you know, people that exited for billions of dollars, yes. and there's this in between, like, right? and people like they can't connect the dots. So you need people in the middle. Yeah. yeah. So you need people in the middle to help connect the dots. Right. Um, so in the valley, you went into five hundred startups. Mm -hmm. How many mentors did you get out of that program? Oh, geez. Like, so five hundred startups starts is really crazy. Accelerator, like they have probably invested about 700 companies at the moment. So they make 500. There's there's more, like there's probably about yeah six seven hundred um, mentors, right? So it's like a really big vast network of founders, um, investors, uh, other entrepreneurs as well. Yeah, so it's huge. So how was it meeting Dave? <laughs> um, is he as funny as what he is on stage? He is. Very boring in person, very serious. Uh, on stage, he's like amazing. So, with Dave, it was funny. So, I never knew who Dave before, was if I went there, right? So, we went to Final Starts on a demo day, um, and we we're pitching. And after we pitched, um, this guy's like, oh, Anthony Mark up from Gravel. So, the Gravel guys last time with Batch said, Hey, you should meet this guy. I'm like, Oh, cool. Hey, how are you? And I showed him my product. He goes, What do you guys do? Oh, this is an inspection product, and this, blah, blah. He's like, Oh, cool. Let me use it. Oh, we have like you know, users that pay us, and all that. So, pretty early. And then, He's like, wow, this is really cool. Um, cool, yeah. Uh, put me in, put me down. I'm like, who are you? Oh, I'm Dave. Who, Dave who? Dave McClough. What do you do? I run this place. <laughs> what do you mean? This whole place you run it? Yes. I, I found a five hundred staff. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> so that was like, yeah. So did, did he like that? I think he did, because you know, a lot of people- He that he's not as known all the time. Well, people always just crawl up in this um, um, pop out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, people like suck up to my butt, right? Cause, and he's just sick of, like, I think anything that stands out. Yeah. yeah. So I think he's saying, ask kisses. Ask kisses. Yeah. Uh, ask kisses. kisses. <laughs> yeah. So he, he was a bit like, uh, I think he would probably feel, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. So out of 500 startups and start me, do you think that's the right process? Should, if, if someone else wants to get into accelerators, should they go through StarMate and 500 or should they just go straight for 500 or why Combinator? Um, I would go to... It depends. I think if you want to, if you really want to accelerate things, go to YC, go to 500 startups. Those two are probably the, the top ones. Techstars, maybe not too bad. Um, StartMate is pretty, like, is very good for Australia. Even, even if on a, on a world stage, StartMate was, was voted yeah. one of the top five, I think. Um, but whatever you can get into, just get into it. For Apply for the mall and then it's a regular credit rating. <laughs> it does your uh, start credit. Yeah, start credit. It doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Um, so steps to get into accelerators, you have to make sure network more. Um, like, so if you like you say the reason why you got to start yeah. because you ran for those people. Mm -hmm. uh, network more, there's it's, it's all the things that you guys already know. It's just have a product mm -hmm. before you even talk about anything. Mm -hmm. Have a market, right? You need to have a, like at least show that people are using it. Um, what else is there? Uh, just show some traction, traction, whatever that means in your in your field. If it's if you're a consumer, it might mean a million users, it might mean a thousand, it doesn't matter. Just have some evidence that it works. Uh, but you need at least a product, like I can't stress it enough. People will go, oh I've got this idea. You know, and I use a like um what what's the Yeah. Everyone's got one. Yeah. And they all stink. 
There's something they came first. Most of them do. Yeah. That's but it, it, you know, like the um the guy who's C D maybe or what his name is, uh Derek Silvers. Like, you know, an idea is like one percent, you know, the, oh, the, the multiplier. Yeah. yeah. So ideas are just whatever everyone's got ideas. Yeah. It's it's execution is the hardest part of that. So the prototype. Prototype and proving the market yeah. kind of needs it or wants it or someone needs it. Yeah. That's the steps. And then just once you have that, then you go apply yeah, the then it's, Should you be genuine with your contacting metals, or should you be asking? Mm, I don't know. Like, I, I like comes back to this, like, so with your first business, you're really honest. Yeah. Um, well, so I think one way to contact mentors and people is not to say, "Hey, I want to get to start, man." I think it's more like, "Hey, I know that you are so and so, and you've done really great." Like, you know, straight there, you go with first. Yeah, it should be like. like Hey Stuart, I know you've run your video and you've like done really, really well in uh, this really great search engine. And I really value your time. Can I come and show you what we're doing? Is, is that what he said to you, Stuart? No, I approached Ginger. I was just saying that. But you know, I think that, that kind of thing works and you just say, hey, I just want to get your feedback about what we're doing. Because yeah. most of the time they're like, oh, this is, it's either interesting and they like it or they don't. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, so um, I'm going to open up for questions from the audience if there's. Any? I can speak really loudly. Um, <laughs> I, I just wanted you to finish your thought that you were going to talk about talent in Adelaide versus San Fran or, or wherever you were going with that. Yeah. Um, so I'll give you some examples of what we've done. Uh, so we, we, we were looking for a Rails developer. We hired a guy, uh, an ex Googler guy, uh, ex Google guy. And we thought, oh, this is pretty cool, right? You know, he was charging out a lot of money. We thought, wow, he must be good. And then we found that his work was, was okay. And we then hired another guy from Australia who was like half of the cost. Um, and basically just, we, we wrote a lot of the things that he did. So I don't know what you need into that. It's just, we have really talented people here. Um, we have a lot of engineers and, and people that I've worked on. Um, very, very diverse projects in our consulting and you know, freelancing background. Um, so we're just as capable. One thing we probably lack is um, scaling, like working with large scale businesses and consumers. Like we don't have a lot of, you know, like you meet people here, oh, we've got like 2,000 users. And like in Silicon Valley, if you're working with a consumer startup and you have 2,000 users, that's like, yeah, it's like you need to get at least like 100,000, a million, whatever. Right? And there's not many people that have got that, I guess, in Australia. Um, so that's one of the big ones. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just curious, do you, do, you, uh, do you find that there's the inverse process where uh, a startup business who's not necessarily into tech can actually use tech could say to uh, a developer, listen, would you be interested in being part of our business for shares as distinct from direct cash? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can do that business, <laughs> We, we did that a lot in the early days in Mighty Kingdom, and it really burnt us. Because, again, it's this whole idea of, oh, we have, you know, this, we have this idea, we want you to build it, and we own 50% of it, right? And then we're like, okay, so we end up building stuff. And then you know that once you build it, it doesn't end, it just keeps going, and you're building stuff. And then the, the, the person with the idea is sort of, that's, his job is done. Right? So I think it's a really hard relationship to create. Um, so a way to approach it, like in Silicon Valley, some, well, I guess another way to approach it is, okay, I have this idea for, um, I, I'm a non-tech business, I have an idea, um, I want you guys to build it, and I'll be your early customer. Does so, that so make sense? So you guys build the idea, um, you either give us like a five year like, contract, or we never have to pay you, or we might get a small percentage for a little bit, and then you guys go and run with that later on. So that way, I don't know, I think that's a nicer way to do things. So it's not all about keeping all the information and holding this resource, because it's hard to build a tech business. Like, you know, like the technology is the easy part, then you have to scale it, sell it. It's never ending. It's never ending. It's working with the stuff you raise out there that you can Yeah. So I don't know if that answers your question a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I can check with you later on. I'll, I'll, yeah. You 
and how has that changed to today? So I think like selling in general, and this is something I like, we continuously learn, and I read a lot, I, um, yeah, I try to learn a lot about all this, and I, I think part of the consulting days has helped a bit, so when you, selling is all the same, right, so you talk to someone, you tell them what you have to offer, you find out what their pain points are, how do you address their pain points, um, and what you can do for them, show them some evidence, show them some customer testimonials, social proof, and then you ask them to close. So it's all the kind of the same. Um, for the smaller customers, like it's a shorter cycle, so you, and there's less things to prove because the decision is pretty binding, yes or no. For the larger guys, there's just a, the, 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 it's just a bit more difficult to navigate the field. So what they want, like, oh, we want to solve. So what's your problem? We want to solve our, you know, this X, Y, Z problem. Okay, well, we can solve it by doing you know, these things. And they're like, well, how do you, uh, you know, I want to bundle in other services. So it just becomes more complex. But at the end of the day, it's still the same. Um, I always ask our guys, hey, uh, ask more questions than you, you, you ask more than you, you tell them. So just ask a lot of questions and what we will tell you their problems. And all you do is just regurgitate the problems back to them as a solution, and I think that helps. Um, why is that funny? <laughs> um, but, but it works because yeah, and that, that kind of works for us. Um, we you know we, we we were looking at Jordan you know Jordan Balfour the uh, Wolf of Wall Street. So I was just telling a few guys before um, you know we, we took so we take a lot of like different sales techniques and we sort of try them out. And one of it is straight line persuasion, which is getting from A to B and just uh, from start to close. Um, and yeah, that works in some customers, it doesn't work in others, but it's, a, you know, it's all the same truth. If you want to get to A to B really quickly, keep them within the sort of decision making process and they're moving through the funnel. If there's any uh, rejections, sort of loop them around uh, so that you address the issue and keep coming back to the sale. And that's very generic. Really. Yeah. Can I follow up with that? Yeah. Uh, so, how many sales people do you have in the moment? At the moment, yeah. uh, we have about uh, four. four well, Three sales, three sort of account executives and salespeople, and then one um, account manager. Is that, yeah, yeah. Right, right. so about four of us. Um, and they're just always getting on the phone and like, the bank. Yeah, so in sales, there's like, the different types of sales. There's like inside sales, outbound sales, um, business development guys. So our guys are predominantly inside sales. So uh, inbound interest come in, they answer the phone, or get an email, they respond outwards, and they ring people on the phone usually. Uh, we have one guy that does a bit of an outbound as well. Where do you come from the market? Any sort of small to focus more on marketing? Yeah, so, what? Yeah, so, mar marketing I think is, so in startups, the hardest part is distribution and marketing. I think that's the hardest part. Like everything else, like you can build stuff, it's easy, yeah, it's also there. But marketing is, like, even sales is pretty easy, because once you have the right product, Right, you, you'll just, find that niche. That yeah, you're just keep selling. But marketing is how do you generate how you find those people? And how do you find them? But how do you find them cheaply? Yeah. And, and so uh, we have a guy, like, we're very fortunate as a guy in our team who does just marketing. Um, and he does everything from white hat, white hat marketing, black hat stuff. He does just everything and he just tries a million different things. So, like, um, you know, like he, we're doing like Facebook uh, installs at the moment, right? And we, uh, you know, he was getting them down to like, Dollar, dollar eighty a click or something like that per install, and you know that was pretty good because we spent like four hundred bucks a month and we're getting like six seven signups from that, yeah. and that's instantly like a four four twenty a month revenue, right? So within a month we were making the money back, and he's just relentless and just keep going. And, yeah. So just just keep trying, more keep trying. Yeah. There's um I don't know if it's optimizely or Kiss Metrics. It's like a chart of all the different marketing things you can do. Um, just pick everyone and do one a day. <laughs> there's no real <laughs> sort of like yeah. yeah, and there's no real silver bullets. Um, yeah. Paul Graham says it's just lead bullets, and it's just oh, I think it's probably some some guy, some guy, some guy, some guy, some guy with guns and bullets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just keep trying a million different things. One will work. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask a follow-up question? Um, sure, possible. Okay, now I'll talk as a customer. Yeah. Um, one one of the difficult things is finding. Uh, uh, people with the right skill sets at the right dollar rate, which is generally why people go overseas, and you're basically saying, well, why can't you keep here, people here? It's basically all, all around the dollar uh, syndrome. How do you think, how do you best look at it from a consumer's viewpoint, 
if you're a startup, you know, if you're a startup company trying to buy those skills in uh, for your company, what's the best approach to well, actually do that? Yeah. So, so this is more a question around like how do you pay people the right money? Is that right? Or attract the right talent? Uh, yeah, to attract the right talent to get a, to get a particular job done. Uh, so let's say I need some programming done for some, for a product that I've actually got that I know where the market is. Yeah. Um, and I've been scratching my head trying to work out who do you go to, who can you trust? You know, is it better to go over to China or India and, and bring those skills, you know, and buy the skills over there and do it here? Uh, who do you know in Adelaide, you know, that can actually do this at, at a cost that's not going to break you? Yeah, um, shameless plug, Mighty Kingdom. But it's, uh, well, uh, I think, so I'll answer it a bit differently and I'll come back to maybe some ideas. But I think um, for us, like, you know, we got lucky, we found a guy for 10 bucks an hour who was like a gun program. Have a good his name address, please. Well, he's my co founder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, like, you know, where do you find talent? I think a lot of the time people, like, especially engineers, um, I don't think they're looking for money as the main like, kind of reward. Does that make sense? Like they're looking for like you know, solving like, interesting challenges. Maybe something that they believe in. If you're like you know specific space, I don't know, hospitality, whatever it is, like that's the club. So if you're in hospitality, like you know, maybe someone wants to uh, really enjoys the nightclub scene, find an engineer that's in that sort of scene. You know, sell them on the vision because at the end of the day, like he can a good engineer can go with anywhere, right? A good programmer can go anywhere. So it's really that selling about the vision, hey, this is what we're trying to achieve, you know, these are the people we're going to work with, this is who I am, do you want to come where, 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 do you, where do you go to that? Okay, there's right, here. The majority is still there. Yeah. So they, they might not, and I think the thing with the bias comes down to the value. I think that's what we need to get to the point of. Don't look at it as like a whole dollar value, but it's dollar. Look at it as the value that you gave back to that hour that someone spent on something. That's what really is the really important now. Because yeah. you'll find engineers that don't charge as much because they see value in the project that they want to do. Yeah. And you get customers that will pay more because they feel like they're more educational and knowledge from paying that hour. I think that's the important when it comes to like, the price you're going to pay for a project. In like, other places you want to go look, you know, yeah, universities, there's a lot of young people that are really good, but then you don't have the experience. So, and a lot of them I find aren't very confident. So they're like, oh, I can do it, but I'm not very confident. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you spend, like, I think universities is one, you can go to like ODES, you can go to ODES, you can find workers. I don't think that the country of origin really matters. Um, I think it's just like you find the right person. Um, you know, it's like dating, you just have to cast your net wide. I've been divorced for 20 years, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like dating, anyway. um, But you just have to, like, go out and, like, you just have to really... Yeah, you, you'll get burnt in the process, but if you don't try, you, you'll never find the right person. Um, but majority of the, the people here, you know, there's a lot of really good staff people, engineers, that are looking to help build stuff. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of freelancers. There's people doing startups here, yeah. um, and there's definitely a lot of freelancers, developers, designers, content writers, there's plenty of people here that help you. Um, I mean, I, I was just invited to come along and uh, I was quite interested uh, when I heard about it. But yeah, I think you, you, you need a lot, a lot more business people here. Uh, you that. need a lot more business people here who, who have got some of our ideas of what I have. Uh, that's where the interaction needs to happen between business and the yeah, definitely. But I think that's, yeah, that's, that's the start. Like you've come in now, so you can tell your friends about this place and let me know if you can discount vouch for the next event. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? So, so you've, you've had the Adelaide sort of perspective and you now you've seen it from you know, the Silicon Valley perspective. What do you think, what don't we kind of get there's Adelaide people here that can help us. You've been very nice up there. Is there something you'd like to, you know, get into oh, that, that we don't get? I love this. Um, so who do you think, who here is working on a startup? That's pretty good, like, you know, probably about 70% of people. And how many people here, like, your startup is focused in on Adelaide? On Australia? The world? I think in Adelaide we dream really small and we're very afraid to take any risks. Like we, 
I don't know, just right, I, mean, I had that as well when I first started. I was like, oh, I'm going to be pretty big in Adelaide. <laughs> I'm going to be bigger in Australia. And I thought, like, wow, I could be big in the world. Yeah, well, there's a world out there. And so I think, like, just dreaming bigger, I think. Um, you know, and, and, like, over there you see a lot of interesting startups and capital with fun, very interesting startups that solve different ideas. Over here, like, you're, you're, the startup has to be really proven and really boring. It's just a clone of something you see. So I think that's really shit. Um, so, I don't know, I just think, like, hanging around with the right people matter. So, you know, if you're, like, in this environment, it's great. Like, you know, like, the guys at Mighty Kingdom and CBW Studios, like, those guys are doing some pretty interesting things. Like, and it's just because they're hanging around each other. Um, and everyone's trying to get this world, like, just build for the global world, not just Adler, really. I mean, you, you can if you want to, it's not, it's not a problem. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not judging. I'm not, I'm not judging. Um, what else has been... What, what was your question? Just, just what do you see as the perspective differences that might be holding us back? Because that way, you haven't had that. Like the first one is, you don't need to be enough for you. Yeah, you don't need to be enough for you. That is sort of like, I'm going to take over the world. Yeah. Where, and they sort of, I'll have to talk to the PC, so I'll bump my numbers down. Yeah, so it doesn't look like I'm so crazy. Yeah. Um, other things, uh, I think just like um, understanding what you like, uh, understanding the markets is a really big thing I find that we don't understand in Adelaide a lot because we, we're not open to like the bigger, the bigger world out there, right? So we just really focus on one tiny thing. I think it's, it all comes down to just like perspective. We're very focused and narrow and very safe, I think we can really like aim to be a bit bigger. Just aim to be bigger. Whatever you think that your company will do, like times 10, 10x. That's, that's our thing at our, um, uh, this quarter, our, our office, but everything's 10x. 10x. How, how can you 10x anything? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have an excerpt, Are you doing anything else besides Happy Inspector? Do I do anything else? Like. Work-wise, oh. like, are you, are, do you have like new side projects now that you've done this a while? Is oh, still right. full-time Sunnel Vision or like? <laughs> that's that, that's actually really good. Um, no, we. Oh, <laughs> my parents asked me the other day, "Hey, so what do you do now?" Happy Inspector. Do you still do the inspection stuff? Yes. What else do you do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> and it's my conversation I have with like all my, my parents for the last two three years. It's like to build one. So. Oh, uh, focus is really important as well, right? So we, all we want to do is to be the number one um, inspection platform to take any pen and paper based inspection or data recording, uh, I guess, uh, exercise and put that down on your tablet or smartphone. Right? And, that, and that, that one problem alone is a really big problem. You know, so I don't think we have any time to do anything else. Um, there might be a few interesting things that come out of it, but that's sort of our main focus. Right? And I think one thing I see in Adelaide as well is I think we're, uh, we, we sell doors and more. <laughs> no, you know, just, just sell doors. Um, and then, again, it comes back to the market size because you can't just sell doors and come yep. in Adelaide. Yep. Um, but we you don't have any time. We need first. <laughs> Break down the doors. Break down the doors first. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the main thing. We uh, just focus on how the inspector, focus on one problem. Um, and just trying to scale it and optimize it and make it bigger. Can you um, unpack what you said about 10x? Uh, oh, what, yeah. it, what is it that's behind that? What, what does oh, it right. do for you? What does it motivate you yeah. to do? Um, so let's say, uh, like, what challenges are you facing in your business at the moment? Me, right now? Yeah. Sleep. I need sleep sometimes. You can't tell me that one. Let's just do something else. Like, let's say lead generation, right? Because, yep. you know, as a designer, it's always hard to sort of, like, how do I get the next customer? Or, and you know that the answer is I'm just going to go and market myself more. So people, the, the normal question people, the normal question people ask is, how do I, or how can I, instead of bringing, bringing five people there, how can I bring seven people there? Right? So the question you want to ask yourself is, how can I 10x this exercise? Right, so how do I bring 50 people, 50 people there? And so initially you think, well, that's impossible, that much time. But then you go, oh, maybe I can get an Odesk worker to do that for me. And then you know, do the cold call for me once it's sort of warm, I can come in and close it. So like, just asking how can I 10x things, I think that really helps. Um, so like, for me, like, we, I was trying to create content for our website and do webinars. Um, and I'm like, wow, it takes like four weeks for me to write one piece of like, content to a webinar. I'm like, how? And I want to do like one a week. That's impossible. So I was like, hmm, what can I do? 
and then I can get other people to like do the webinars, you know, contribute to webinars and I just interview them. Then I'm like, maybe I can get my Otis worker to go find people to do it. So I just that's what I did. I found I got my Otis worker to bring you know, to email like to about 200 people and now they've actually got like 20 people and now they're all lined up for webinars. So basically 20 is like So those two examples were almost identical in that you're just finding more efficient ways to do things. Yeah. Does it do anything else for you? Like like keep you optimistic or <laughs> help you break down what was your limits before? Uh, I think it, it helps you break down your limits. I think limits are the like you know like yeah limits are the major factor why we don't try to do more, I think. Like someone always asks like if you if you knew if you knew you wouldn't you couldn't fail, what would you do? I think that's a really good question. Um so TEDx is just a way to frame things and look at a problem in a different way. Um, yeah, how, how do you keep motivated? That's how do you keep sane? That's a tricky one. <laughs> you just do it. Do you want to be sane in a startup? I would like to be sane in a startup. I get jealous of my friends who drive nice cars now and they're like cushy jobs. I'm like, no. Oh. Just wait pay them. Pay them will come. It yeah. will come. But I'm um, the other you're passionate about what you do. Yeah. I see my like, you know, friends that really enjoy what they do. You say. Probably not. That must Well, it's not so much the car, it's just like some days when you do start, you just want to switch off and not think about anything. Yeah, and that comes back to what you're trying to work out as you balance. Yeah, of how, how do you do it? How do you just stop? No idea. You just keep going. It's fun. But that's what you do at the time. Nothing. <laughs> that joke. <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? How did you pick your investors? They pick you. I'm um, talking about motivation. Do your investors motivate you? Uh, do our investors motivate us? Yeah. Um, they they kind of do. Cause I think when you start to have investors, then your business takes a little bit of a different trajectory. Like you, you know that you're accountable to a certain extent. So you know if you don't have investors, you just keep going, plodding along, just keep cruising. It's fine. But you have investors now. You're like, okay, you have a some kind of responsibility to be better. Um, so investors definitely help that. Um, our investors like predominantly our angel investors so far, they've been really, really helpful, really nice. Thanks <laughs> 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 um, no, to it. So they've been pretty, pretty good to us. Um, we, we, I guess we kind of picked them after a while. Like in the beginning when you were looking for investments, it's really hard to pick, but it's really important to pick investors because uh, you get the wrong money and then It's a marriage, right? They always say like investing in marriage, so. Um, so how do you deal with, with distractions? Did you, along the way, get people who went like, we'll give you this much money if you change path to do what we want? Did, did that happen yeah. to you? Um, yes and no. I think if we, like, so one thing I think if we stayed in Adelaide, that would have definitely had happened if we got the initial investment, because they want us to do all these other things that I'm like, that's my pitching. So I think it's like finding the right, um, right kind of investors you know, that sort of believe in you, they believe the market. Uh, but outside and of investors, like just clients that you know, you pitch them one thing and they go like, well, yeah. what about that one? I'll pay for that. I think you should always listen to people who pay the bills. <laughs> if, if like, if uh, you know, if two out of a thousand people say something, then you can maybe think about mm, does this fit? If it doesn't fit, okay, let's do something else. But let's keep going. If like nine nine hundred out of the thousand say, hey, you should do this, yeah. then you should. Um, it's really hard though because sometimes you, you don't want to build things that are outside of what you, you're trying to get to. Do you have a ice box? Yeah, we have. Uh, uh, so like things, features that are that are committed to the product one day, but yeah, just not planned out. Our ice box has so many things in there, and <laughs> things change. Um, yeah, so it's, it's it's a really. But hard does that thing. help you? Yeah, so you, um, so we learned a lot about how to like uh, manage the customer's expectations, and you find that people over time, if they keep asking for it, then it's important that people just forget about things after a while. Like, they, <laughs> important things they don't, but you know, just the, the little oh, can you do this and that? Yeah, it's coming soon, and keep it in your list of things to do. Yeah. I don't, that doesn't really help answer your question. But, yeah. um, <laughs> 
and they could answer for long. Um, having, uh, so uh, I'll probably can speak to you guys individually about how they're playing product development. There's a few things that we've, we've kind of learned. <laughs> Phil always laughs at me because, yeah. Do you always do you want to come up and share some of your stories? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you're crying. Let's give five tips and then we'll finish it. So five tips of product development and how you can. Five tips, well, five, five tips. tips. <clears throat> and then everyone can chase five tips by that one. And I'll do that, I don't want to do the product development. You don't? No. Give me five tips of something. Five tips of something. <laughs> five tips of being a cold people. What, what do you guys want to know? Is there anything that. What about managing technical people if you don't know shit about what they're doing? Yeah. So I think it's really important to find a technical co-founder. And I know that's not the answer you wanted to hear, but it's really, really is. And I, I know of a few startups in Adelaide that have not had that technical co-founder, and it's, yeah, it's been really hard for them. It's really hard because you always spend your day not trusting people, right? Is he really quoting me the right hours? And I think it's. You just have to find that one person that's technical enough to help you. Um, how do you manage them? You, you, I don't know, you just do. I don't think they can be truly managed. They can't be managed? I think you, you, uh, you, you eventually learn how to manage them. Right. You think, I think you learn how to work with them. Uh, don't, don't talk to me. Can you like, chat me? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm not talking to person. The fun in Facebook. This is a green light. <laughs> Yeah. Um, any, any other questions that you guys like, have specifically? How important to your business do you see the money people, the accountants, the finance? Uh, I think like, yeah, they're very, well, <laughs> to me they're very important. <laughs> Are they like crucial, crucial or? Not, not in the, the early stages, it's not that important, right? But as you start to grow, they become more and more important. Because like, uh, one of my weaknesses is my financial side, because I'm not very good financially, but I can just learn and read and do stuff. But um, yeah, the legal team is important, but not in the beginning. Um, you can find a lot of, like, like just templates. Lots of templates, yeah, just templates. I think a lot of the time, I spend a lot of time and effort in finding the my legal documents. So it's an issue, so it's called work. Find a place and yeah. And um, for us, when we started, right? So we we had so we started collecting. When we first got those initial customers. They were getting paid from my PayPal, my personal PayPal account. Not even having to there. I was like, oh yeah, sure. Here's the PayPal link. They just paid through PayPal. We had no contract. I just like basically copied and paste and just like this is the contract. And you just like over time, you just learn T's and C's. Easy. <laughs> Copy paste. Change. Yeah. Change T's and C's. So like they're important, um, but. In the early stages when you don't even know what you're doing, and you have no product, no, no sales, just don't waste money. You don't want to waste it. Well, yeah. I mean, it's something that we've, um, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, don't waste money. <laughs> wasn't, there wasn't anything important that I was going to say. It's not really embarrassing. There's nothing. It's embarrassing to say. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, the other thing I can say is we've been pretty fortunate with like, the federal government. Uh, we've actually had a CA grant as well. So I know Grant's here somewhere. Where's Grant? He's right in the back. He's in the front chair. Uh, so we've had a commercialization Australia grant that's really helped us as well. So if you know, like it's once you, you start getting your you know that recently? Uh, was it recently? Reasonably recent. Reasonably recent. I like how he answers questions. <laughs> Reasonably recent, yeah. Um, and you know that, that those things sort of like um, again it's Getting the word out there, talking to people, meeting people. Yeah, I think that's, that's the important thing. I did a startup last year, you yeah. know, it failed quite miserably. Yeah. But I didn't know that CIA grants were to do that we in this space. I didn't get around on the startups. Yeah. And that's definitely not the same. Yeah, where to from here, Jindo? What happens next? Uh, I'm probably just going to go stay for another week and head back. Uh, what's back? Well, I think what is going to happen? Well, we just have. Well, so I'm, I'm, I'm telling everyone at the moment we're in the grind, and all we do is just grind every day. We go to work, get more customers, do more product, help more people, sell more, learn more, and it's just every day is just constant, just slow. So I think we'll probably be grinding for another five years. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably not five years. Yeah, it is. As long as you're growing every day. Yeah. As long as you're growing, yeah, but it, it, it really feels like a grind, like a start growing. Yeah. Ooh.
Last part. Yeah. I'm gonna get this guy in a It's part of fake company. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what was your most effective sales strategy? Was it what you were saying at the start, how you sort of ask them questions, listen to their problems, then have them to find a solution, or did you find out something else over the past um, once it started? So I think the sales funnel is really important. So if you have like a, like finding out what the sales funnel is, right? So if you have like, you know, you think about the funnel, as the top you've got sort of like leads, so the top the funnel leads, and then the funnel coming through your marketing channels or your product, and then they eventually get to your sales, whatever that is, it could be inside sales, or outbound sales, whatever it is, you just have to get that sales funnel right. Um, yeah, I, the most effective one, the most effective one is when the customers contact you and they want to buy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but that, that's actually a skill in itself that you can create like, in, like enough um, that, need. that need for someone to go, hey, I've, you know, and we do that, we're getting better at that. So uh, if someone comes in from our, our website, they fill in like a form and they're seeing our demo, we actually track all, all that, that that's happening and we give them like a score. And if they hit like a certain score, we actually reach out and talk, talk to them. And we find that those people close 80% of the time. Versus someone that we reach out and cold call, like, oh my god, it takes forever to sell ice cream to... <laughs> it takes forever to sell ice cream to do who don't want ice cream. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> and and um, one thing as well I think is, uh, uh, you know, when you ask people questions and stuff, like, people just tell you from their experience, the best way to, to learn is just to get in there and do it yourself. Because like, you know, I always have, I have no idea what your business does. I don't even want to try to understand it because I know my business well and that's all I know. Um, so yeah, just like get out there, learn and, and just keep failing and trying. Because when, when you succeed, it's not so much, oh, we had this cool thing and it, it went well. It's more like we tried a million things and we found two things that worked really well, whatever it is. And we kept doing that and now we're successful. And everyone else who copied you didn't do those two things. It is, because a lot of people have a sort of success. And it depends on how many times you follow them before you got to that success. Yeah, and yeah, and I think I'm really good at falling over. Like, and, and, and I mean, <laughs> good at falling because I don't really, I, I'm just thinking I don't really care about falling over. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's really important. I, I, I do, and uh, it, it, I take that across to my, uh, uh, my comedy. So Phil says I have a scattergun <laughs> approach to comedy, so I just shoot a million things and one of them works. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, the way you do it to start off sound. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. Cool. More questions? Alright, so I think we'll finish it. If anyone else has any questions, you guys stick around for a little bit. Yep. Sure. Cool. Alright, thank you much, Julie. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, next time around is Doug Adamson on the 24th of April, I think. We'll release some information in the next week, so get your tickets. Thank you. Thank you.